Hello everyone, Richard Schneeman here talking about email in Rails. Let's go ahead and get started. Why is email important? Well, it is the most connected social network in the world. Um, typically, if somebody wants to send me photos, they you know they're they're uh, might use some sort of a site like uh, Flickr or Picasa or whatever. Um, but they, chances are they're going to get in contact with me via email. So email is something that most everyone that is on the internet has and everyone knows how to use. Um, so it's a very important communication tool. And uh, it, when I was working at Gowalla, it was incredibly important. Um, we found that the you know number of outgoing, uh, useful outgoing emails we sent had a direct correlation to the amount of activity on the on our site. So the more useful emails that we could send, uh, the more people would use our site, which you know kind of makes sense. All right, so you might just recognize emails as emails, but there are uh, two different components or two different ways we can send emails. We can send text HTML. So here's an example of an HTML email. It's styled. There are pictures. Um, there are buttons. There are you know all these nice links. We can also have text plain emails, and so this is kind of just an example of a plain text email. There are no pictures. There are uh, we're not floating anything. We're not doing any CSS. These are new lines, and yeah, sure the links show up, but uh, but that's pretty much it. So these are two different ways that we can send emails, and uh, different email clients will um, process those differently. Um, Originally, when I found that out, I was like, okay, well, uh, you know, why would we even, I'm pretty sure most email clients can do um, HTML emails, why would we even bother doing text emails? And I found out that uh, some militaries don't allow HTML emails because they're so security conscious or some corporations. So uh, we can send out an email in one format or the other, or we can actually send out both at the same time using Rails. So to send out mail from Rails, we're going to generate a mailer. Here we're calling it user email, but it can be absolutely anything you wanted. Um, so Rails generate mailer user email. That is going to give us a class of user email inside of app mailers user underscore email dot rb. So in here, we have a couple different things. We can set our default from email address, and, and we are going to have to have a default, or, or we are going to have to have a from email address in order to send a valid mail. Um, that's why a lot of companies will send you email from no reply at something.com because it's a, re a required field. They have to have something there. But in those situations, we're kind of indicating that, hey, uh, this mailbox isn't exactly monitored. Uh, so inside of your actual mailer, we create method definition. So here we have a method of sign up notify, and we're going to pass in a user. We're going to then turn around and assign that uh, user to an instance variable of at user, and these behave very much like a controller, uh, slightly different, and we're going to see that in just a second, but um, your mailer is going to, if you think of it in terms of a controller-like structure, similar to Rails controllers, then you're going to be, you're going to be pretty okay most of the time. Um, and then we have this other line where we actually provide some, rather than saying like redirect or render, we're going to say mail and then we pass in an email address and then we give it a subject. We can, we can pass in quite a few more things, but um, just for, for brevity, wanted to leave it at that. From there, we have to have some views. So I said the mailer was kind of like a controller. Well, that uh, controller-like structure uses views. And you're going to find those in app views user underscore email, which matches up with the name of the controller or the name of the mailer. Then uh, sign up underscore notify dot text dot erb matches up with the name of our method. So we had sign up underscore notify, and then this is also sign up underscore notify. Notice that we do specify dot uh, text dot erb, and so this is pure plain um, text. We have new lines. We don't have any sort of page breaks, we don't have any HTML, we don't have any images, and this is how Rails knows, because we have specified the uh, extension of text.erb, that this is the plain text version of our email. We can also have a sign up underscore notify.html.erb, and because it's html.erb, Rails knows, okay, this is the HTML version. So, you know, we can have some nice formatting, we have some uh, paragraph um, tags in here. We can do really anything that we want. Uh, if you're new to styling HTML emails, all of you can't use external style sheets. You have to have all of your CS, 
CSS inline, um, and it's kind of archaic. Uh, definitely recommend trying it out. Um, there are a few really good resources if you just Google uh, template and e HTML email template. There's quite a few of them. I know MailChimp uh, has a couple of really, really good ones. Um, but uh, so from there, once we have our controller-like structure, so we, we generated that mailer, then we made our views, and we previously already had users in our database. We can run Rails console and then pull a user from our database. And then in order to send a an email, we call user email directly, and then we call that uh, method sign up underscore notify on the user email class and pass in whatever arguments we um, we wanted. Now, it doesn't have to be user. We, can, we could have made those as any arguments that we wanted. We could have had multiple arguments, but um, at uh, whenever we're done calling sign up notify, then we have to call deliver. And this is going to use an SMTP server. So SMTP is a protocol. It's like HTTP is a protocol. Whenever you go to HTTP colon slash slash google.com, that, you know, that's using a protocol. SMTP is the protocol in which we use to send email. So um, in order to do this, in order to actually use that protocol, we are going to need an SMTP server. Uh, I know that it might sound uh, sound difficult, but uh, in production, we're going to probably want to use a service like SendGrid or Mailgun. I've used both. Both work um, pretty well, pretty happy with, uh, with both of them. Inside of uh, your production application, if it's on Heroku, you can simply run Heroku add-ons add, and then for the the free version of SendGrid, it's going to be SendGrid colon starter. Notice that that might change, so you, you probably just want to Google add-ons and SendGrid, or um, Heroku add-ons and Mailgun, and there will be some instructions on how to do that. After you have done that, uh, you can add some initializers that configure the SMTP settings. So, and again, that should be in the documentation on side of uh, Heroku. So here we are configuring Action Mailer Base, and we're saying, hey, use these SMTP settings. So port 587, um, plain text authentication. We provide it with a username, a password, a domain, um, and uh, and then you know finally we set the delivery method to SMTP. And again, all of that documentation should be online. All right, uh, that was a really quick introduction into email. Uh, I will say that the guides on email are really good when you need to start sending them out. And uh, don't, if you're creating a website where you do have interaction with users, uh, adding an email component can be incredibly rich. And a lot of people actually come to expect email in terms of websites. There's uh, email functionality built into Devise, as a matter of fact, where you can do things like verify a user account. You can also have um, forgot password, um, that functionality where you say, I forgot my password. You provide your email, it emails you a temporary link. And without without email, you wouldn't be able to do that. All right, thanks for tuning in. We're going to talk about full text search in just a second.